Whenever I get a new Mac, which is quite often, I set it up just the way I like it. And in today's video, I'm gonna share 10 customizations I make to Mac OS, some of which you might find useful. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't, just click the button below. And just a quick note about my Patreon membership. You're supporting the channel just by watching this video, but if you do wanna get some extra content, get access to my Discord server, which is superb by the way, then just click the link in the description. Now you're about to discover that I'm not much of a tinkerer when it comes to Mac OS. I know how I like my Mac setup, but I don't dive really deeply into customizations. I've been using Macs as my daily drivers for at least 10 years. So over that time, I've developed a very specific list of things that I do to a brand new Mac to make it work for me. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 of those tweaks that I make to Mac OS. Some of them you might do already, and some of them you may not even be aware of. So let's just get into it. I have a bit of a weird relationship with the dock in Mac OS. I still think it's a much better way of presenting your most used apps than the way that Windows does it, but I'd never quite work out where best to place it on the screen. So for example, on the big ultra wide screen behind me, you can probably see actually, I've got it on the, the left hand side of the screen. Whereas normally on my MacBook Air or the iMac, I have it at the bottom. Now this is a very personal thing. There's a group of people out there who absolutely swear by having the dock on the left or the right hand side. That's fine, they do it for various reasons, normally to preserve screen real estate. And on that big widescreen monitor, that works. But for a normal Mac, I always keep it at the bottom. However, I always resize it. I think when it first comes out of the box, it's just far too big basically so I always make it a bit smaller or quite a bit smaller actually depending on the size of the screen and also I turn on auto hiding which just hides it from view when you're not using it. I don't bother with magnification or anything like that it's just hidden, resized, done. I've never understood why Macs don't come with the Macintosh HD shortcut on the desktop by default. So when you first get a Mac and you open up the lid or you turn it on you just get a blank desktop and if you're the sort of person who likes completely blank desktops that's great. I like to keep my desktop tidy and clean as well. But I do come from a Windows background and Windows always had my computer. That was always the, the icon that was at the top right hand corner. In older versions of Mac, Mac OS, we used to have the same thing. It would say Macintosh HD. For whatever reason, a few years ago, they just removed it completely. You can add it back in. And to do that, you just go into Finder, Preferences, and in there you'll find that you can add it in. I also turn on the Snap to Grid functionality, which just means it keeps all of the icons and files and things that you leave on the desktop inevitably in order and nicely aligned. But having that Macintosh HD icon on the desktop remains the most common way that I get into the Finder, even though I know there is a Finder icon on the dock. I don't touch that one very often. I tend to go for the desktop for whatever reason. I think it's the Windows in me. When you first get a Mac and you start opening applications, when you minimize those applications, you'll notice it puts them onto the dock, but in their own minimized icon on the right hand side. So for example, if you have five or six applications open and you minimize them all, you'll have five or six additional little icons appearing at the bottom right on the dock. I don't get that, that's just messy. So what I do is turn on a feature called minimize windows into application icon, which you can find in dock preferences. And you get to dock preferences by right clicking on the dock. And what happens then when you click minimize, it goes straight into the app icon rather than onto its own little shelf on the bottom right hand corner of the dock. And you can still get back to it. You just click the app icon and it re re-emerges from the, from the icon, but it just keeps the entire dock tidier. I'm quite a big fan of Finder in Mac OS, but I do find it needs a few little tweaks just to make it work for me. Now, again, I've said Windows a lot in this video already. I'm quite conscious of that, but I do think the long, long time I spent with Windows, if we're talking 10, 15, maybe more years with Windows in the past, I think that got me used to certain ways that files were displayed. So whenever I get a new Mac, I set three things as defaults in Finder. The first one is I set the view to as a list. So when you go into a Finder window, you see all of your files and folders as a list. I don't like the idea of having them as big icons. I just wanna see more of them on the screen. I then set the status bar to always show, and that is the little bar that appears at the bottom of Finder, and it tells you things like how many files are in that particular folder that you're in, if you've got any selected, how many you've selected. Crucially, it tells you how much storage space is left on that drive. The last thing I do with Finder to tweak it for my own use is to add my most used folders to the favorites bar on the left-hand side. So when you go into Finder on the left-hand side, it will give you a whole bunch of fairly, or what Mac OS believes you want to access regularly. But chances are you'll have other folders, other personal folders, work-based folders that you want to access. And to add those folders to the favorites list, you just drag them from their location into the favorites list. It retains them where they are. They don't move physically from 
wherever they are on the drive, but it creates a shortcut to that folder or file, if you like, within the favorites list. I use that all the time because I've got probably four or five folders that I regularly go into, whether it's to access Word documents or video files, whatever it might be. And it's just so handy that whenever I pull up Finder, no matter where I am in Finder, on the left-hand side, I can get those most used folders. Super useful. Go back to the dock. Whenever you get a new Mac, Apple will helpfully add a whole bunch of default apps for you. And as mentioned earlier, I think the dock is a great way to access your most used apps. But if those apps are joined by all sorts of other different apps that you never use, it can just get a bit overwhelming and it just looks a bit untidy. So the first things I do is I remove apps from the dock that I re very rarely or never use. And obviously this is very particular to, to the way that I use Macs. The apps that you remove from it may be very different, but just to give you an idea, I remove FaceTime, but I also remove things like Mail, Calendar, Contacts, Pages, Numbers, and a few of the apps where I've either got a replacement for it in, in the form of a third party app, or I just don't ever use them, like Contacts. I never go into Contacts, so that comes off. The other thing I do when I get a brand new Mac is immediately turn off Hey, in this studio alone, I've got about a thousand devices that will go off if I say, hey, and I just don't really see the point of it on the Mac. It's nice to have Siri there, although, again, actually thinking about it, I barely ever use Siri on the Mac. And by turning it off, it just means that there's one less device in the studio that will not go off if I ever utter those immortal words. The next thing I do is set my default apps for mail and calendars. And I don't use the stock mail app in macOS, and I don't use the stock calendar app either. So for email, for example, I use an app called Spark, which is absolutely fantastic. And for my calendar, I use Fantastical, which is equally brilliant. But that does mean that I don't want mail to fire up, for example, if I start a new email message from another app. And if I accept a calendar invite or something, I don't want it to fire up the Apple calendar app. Now to change this behavior, unfortunately, you have to go into the app itself and set the default app that you'd like to use instead. So for example, for mail, I have to go into mail, into mail's preferences, and then choose Spark as the default email application. And I do the same thing for calendar with Fantastical. It's just, it's not the end of the world. It's just a bit annoying that you have to go into the app. I'd much rather there was something in settings where you could just say, here's my default email application, and here's my default calendar application. You can't, you have to go into them, but it is a one-time thing. Once you've done it, you're done, finished. Widgets, I do add some widgets to macOS and I've taken the mickey out of widgets quite a bit recently, but they are quite useful and you tend to find there's one or two that are genuinely handy for, for either for your work or for your hobbies or whatever it might be that you do. Now, as you would guess, Apple does add some default widgets for you. I remove most of them, particularly the Stocks app. I don't know who uses that. And instead, I just add four widgets. So the first one is the Fantastic Hal widget, which is really good just for a very quick glance at what you've got coming up on your calendar. Second one is the weather. I then add two clock widgets, which are set to two different time zones that I tend to work with people in. So I know what time it is in their neck of the woods. I'm a big fan of the Apple Watch. I did swap it for a little while with a G-Shock and I still now go back to the G-Shock occasionally. So I'm not quite as wedded to this as I have been in the past, but whenever I use that G-Shock watch and I'm working on my Mac, there's one feature I miss massively from this watch. And that's the ability for your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. And it's so much more convenient than any of the biometric security that Apple offers in terms of Face ID and Touch ID, which are both great. But with the Apple Watch unlocking your Mac, you literally just approach your Mac, make sure you come out of the screensaver, and it just unlocks. And you can find the setting in System Preferences, Security and Privacy, General. It's not turned on by default, obviously, but if you've got an Apple Watch, then Apple recognizes that fact, click the tick box. I've had some issues in the past where it, for some reason it doesn't enable and it doesn't really give you much to go on. It just says couldn't enable at this time or something, but nine times out of 10, it will enable first time. So if you've got an Apple Watch and you've got a Mac and you had no idea that you can unlock it with your watch, turn it on straight away. It's the most convenient way of getting into your computer Ever. The last thing I do when I set up a new Mac, and I can't remember if this is set by default, I don't think it is. When you go into the system preferences, general appearance, you get three options for the way that macOS looks basically. One is the standard light version. Another version is the dark mode version. And then you've got auto. Now this is complete personal preference. You might want to leave it in the kind of classic light version of macOS that's always been the thing. Or you might be the sort of person who loves dark mode and you want to leave it in dark mode all the time. I think like everyone, when Apple first 
introduced dark mode in macOS, I immediately switched to it and left it like that for ages, but I did find it a bit oppressive after a while. Equally, it's quite nice at certain times of the day, and what I do, I set it to auto, because that then basically switches from light to dark mode, depending on the time of the day. So in the evening, it, it switches to dark mode, and then a bit earlier in the morning, it comes back into light mode. I just like the fact that occasionally, when I go to my Mac, later in the evening and open it, it's it looks different. It's in dark mode. It's just, I don't know, it's a bit silly, but it's, it just gives me that, it rejuvenates my, my love for macOS a little bit. Now I did say at the start of this video, I was gonna give you 10 customizations. Those were the 10. There was one that I forgot actually, and it relates to the trackpad. So if I'm using a trackpad either like this one, or the trackpad that you get on the MacBooks, I set tap to click, which basically means is that you don't have to click down to click, you can just tap your finger on it. Again, that is complete personal preference. Some people might find that a bit too sensitive. It probably is another bit of a hangover from the Windows days when I used to use trackpads on Windows. I, I remember doing the same thing on Windows. And for me, it just, I'm just used to tapping rather than clicking. I hope you found some of those tips useful. Be interesting to know if there were any there that you weren't aware of. If that is the case, let me know in the comments. Equally, if you've got your own macOS customizations that I haven't mentioned and you think I'm missing out on something, get involved in the comments. But if you're interested to see a little bit more about how I use macOS, keep watching for a video that I made recently, which delves into the reasons I use Apple Notes for most of my note taking. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.